Cartagener syndrome is the topic for this video. And in this video, we'll just abbreviate it KS. So KS is a genetic disorder. It is autosomal recessive, and it occurs in approximately one out of every 32,000 births. So it is quite rare, and the fundamental aspect of Cartagener syndrome is that it involves pathology of the cilia, and in particular, motility. So I'd like to show you a photo. Over here, you have normal cilia, and you will see these little arms here. I'll circle them. And those arms are called dynin. And these arms help with the motility. Now, over here, you have cilia that are missing the dynin arms. So if you have a reduction in the number of dynin arms, what does that mean? Essentially, the primary effect is that it creates immotile cilia. Now, why is this important? Cilia line the upper airways, and they help with mucus clearance. So if these cilia are not working properly, if they're immotile, you will not get mucus cleared from the upper airways, and mucus will build up in those airways. In addition to mucus, bacteria. And when that happens, you get chronic respiratory infections. So Cartagena syndrome can appear in a patient in a triad. Three very important things. The first is what we just talked about, that the cilia are basically immotile, and that is given a term, primary ciliary dyskinesia. Dyskinesia is a term that means abnormal movement. The second part of the triad is abnormal sinuses, such as sinusitis, bronchiectasis, and we touched on this earlier that this is essentially referring to the airway having a buildup of mucus and bacteria, which leads to respiratory infections. And the third part of the triad is a very interesting finding known as situs inversus. This is essentially transposition, and if you notice over here, this L is referring to the left side. Now look at where the heart is. The heart is all the way here on the right side, and this liver is over here on the left side. So basically, what is supposed to be on the left is now on the right, and what's supposed to be on the right is now on the left. So it's basically a flip of the organs. The heart being flipped is given its own unique term, dextrocardia. And if you notice in this photo, the thoracic and the abdominal organs are all reversed. And that is situs inversus totalis. Why does situs inversus happen in Cartagena syndrome? The belief is that inside the embryo, the visceral rotation of these organs is dependent upon normal ciliary action. So if you have abnormal or immotile cilia, the proper visceral rotation does not occur inside the embryo. So now let's talk about the history and the symptomatology. How would a patient present? Usually the patient presents at a very young age with a history of respiratory infections or distress. And this can go on as the child grows with the history of ongoing respiratory symptoms such as 
rhinorrhea, rhinitis, all because of the buildup of mucus and bacteria. And that can lead, of course, to more serious complications such as bronchiectasis, recurrent pneumonias, and ongoing sinusitis. In addition, you can also have male infertility. And this is a very important aspect of the presentation. And the reason is because in addition to cilia being immotile, you can also have immotile spermatozoa. Because if you have a sperm, the sperm's tail, known as the flagella, are also affected. And this leads to the abnormal sperm motility. So keep that in mind. That's a very important aspect of Cartagena syndrome in terms of its presentation and symptomatology. Diagnosis of KS. The cilia need to be microscopically analyzed to detect the number of dining arms. A chest x-ray or a CT of the chest will be very helpful to detect situs inversus, which is when you have the flipping of the organs in the thoracic and abdominal areas. It will show the heart on the opposite side, which is known as dextrocardia, any respiratory infections, for example, pneumonia or bronchiectasis. And in addition to these tests, an analysis of the semen is done in order to detect the motility of the sperm if it's normal or abnormal. Now let's discuss the treatment of Cartagena syndrome. There's no actual cure, so the management of Cartagena syndrome essentially involves treating each individual pathology, each individual infection. So for example, lung infections are treated with antibiotics. Immunizations are given to prevent infections from occurring. Each individual infection is treated with its own medications such as steroids or bronchodilators. A term known as pulmonary hygiene or pulmonary toilet is commonly used to describe when you actually go in and suction the mucus out of the airways. So essentially, there's no cure, so the emphasis is really on minimizing complications. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. A couple presents to a clinic for workup of infertility after five years of unprotected intercourse. The wife denies any medical problems and notes regular menstrual cycles. The husband states that he has had chronic sinusitis and lower respiratory tract infections. Physical exam of the woman is unremarkable. Examination of the man is remarkable for dextrocardia. Further workup of the husband will most likely reveal. So you have essentially a man who has dextrocardia, which is quite rare, and he also has these infections, chronic sinusitis and lower respiratory tract infections. And him and his wife are unable to conceive due to infertility, most likely because of his immotile sperm. So this is essentially a man with Cartagena syndrome. And further workup, most likely a semen analysis, would show choice C. A medical student examining a patient is startled when he cannot find the patient's heart during auscultation. The patient laughs and tells him to try the other side. Auscultation of the right side of the chest does demonstrate an apparently normal heartbeat. Further physical exam demonstrates that the liver edge can be palpated 
on the left, but not the right side of the abdomen. Questioning of the patient about his medical history reveals a history of bronchiectasis and sinusitis. Which of the following should be suspected? Well, it's a great question. Essentially, you've got this situs inversus, where the thoracic and abdominal organs are essentially reversed in terms of their location. And he also tells you about his history of chronic respiratory infections. So the most likely medical condition is Cartagena syndrome. A 25-year-old man with infertility is diagnosed with Cartagena syndrome. He has also been particularly susceptible to recurrent pulmonary infections and bronchiectasis, which of the following cellular functions is most likely disrupted in this patient. I just want to mention that bronchiectasis is actually a complication. Because of recurrent bouts of lung infections, there is destruction and dilatation of the bronchial walls. Now going back to this question, you've got a man with infertility who's already got the diagnosis and he's also told you about his recurrent infections and they're saying what is the cellular function that essentially is wrong in this patient and of course we all know that Cartagena syndrome involves the cilia and in particular a reduction in the number of dynein arms and that would lead to reduced motility the answer would be disruption in the motility of the cilia